Today we're going to turn one $30 liquid culture syringe into hundreds or even thousands of dollars worth of liquid culture. And the cool part is it's super cheap and easy. So if you're new to growing mushrooms, the liquid culture is a starting point for a lot of people. It's basically the body of the mushroom, AKA the mycelium suspended in a sugary liquid nutritious broth. If you think mushrooms are the fruit, then mycelium is like the tree that grows the fruit. Pretty cool, huh? Most people buy these liquid culture syringes online for about 30 bucks plus another 10 bucks for shipping, which is fine if you're just gonna do one or two here and there. However, if you guys are planning on doing this more than once or twice, it becomes so much more cost efficient to take one of those syringes and just expand it out into like, like I said, like 50 or 100 different syringes. Then you can inoculate as much spawn as you want. So let's just jump right into which supplies we need and then I'll show you guys exactly how to do it. So for starters, we need one liquid culture of your choosing. It doesn't matter what you choose. All liquid cultures will kind of respond the same. You can do reishi, lion's mane, shiitake whatever weird mushroom you found out in the wild you can reproduce a liquid culture and expand it into more liquid culture in addition to that syringe we're going to need a pressure cooker some alcohol to sterilize with a mason jar or two some pillow stuffing or micro pore tape a self-healing injection port or high temperature silicone distilled water a still air box or laminar flow hood, liquid malt extract, or you could use honey instead if you want, and a way to make holes in the lid of your mason jar with something like a drill and drill bits, or maybe a hammer and some nails or a screwdriver, whatever you have access to. That might sound like a long list, but most of those things can be picked up for just three or four bucks. And the other things that are a little bit more expensive should last you a lifetime. Remember, this is going to save us hundreds or even thousands of dollars down the road. And I'm going to link everything that I'm using right down in the description below. Also, while it's not necessary, I really recommend getting a magnetic stirrer and I'll explain why in a couple minutes. So we are going to begin by prepping our jar. Well, the lid of our jar. So we're gonna take the lid off and drill a couple of holes in it. I did one at half an inch and another one at a quarter inch. I probably could have just done them both at a quarter inch since the half inch ended up mangling the lid a little bit, but it's fine, it'll still serve its purpose. We really just need one hole that's big enough for a syringe to get in and out of it and another hole that will allow some airflow. So they don't really need to be giant holes like I just did. I try to put the holes on opposite sides of the lid because when I go to put my syringe in to draw out liquid culture in the future, I kind of have to tilt the jar on its side and I don't want all that liquid culture to just pour through the vent hole if that's right next to the injection hole, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put a glob of high temperature silicone on here and then I'm gonna pull some pillow stuffing through the other hole. This particular silicone takes 24 hours to cure so I will see you guys in 24 hours. <laughs> All right, so your silicone is all cured up and you are ready to roll. We are going to add 500 milliliters of distilled water to our mason jar. You can weigh this out on your food scale to 500 grams if you want, it's the same thing. For those of you who wanna use ounces, this would be about 17 ounces or just over two cups. I do warm the water a little bit in the microwave to help that liquid malt extract dissolve. Then we're gonna add 10 grams of the malt extract powder into the water. This is gonna create a 2% mixture and again these are guidelines these do not have to be exact if you guys end up doing 490 milliliters of water instead of 500 or you did 11 grams of malt extract instead of 9 or 10 it's probably not going to make or break your liquid culture so now we're going to mix that bad boy up and make sure all the powder dissolves nicely this is an optional step of course but this is where i drop my magnet in if you choose to skip this step and just swirl by hand that's totally okay however when it comes time to draw your liquid culture into your syringe I've found that swirling by hand, it's a lot harder to break up the clumps of mycelium than it is when you have a magnetic stirrer. And again, this stirrer thing is like 20 bucks on Amazon. It's not too big of an investment and it improves, in my opinion, the quality of your liquid culture a good bit.
After that's all mixed up, we're gonna put our lid on, cover it with foil, and drop it into our pressure cooker. Check your manufacturer's instructions for how to operate your pressure cooker. My giant pressure cooker, I think is 22 liters. So I drop three liters of water in the bottom. I elevate the platform so my mason jar isn't sitting in the water. It's just sitting on like three balls of foil which raise the trivet and so it sits maybe two or three inches off of the bottom. We're gonna close our pressure cooker and turn the heat on. Once we have a steady flow of steam coming out for 10 minutes, we're gonna close the valve and let the pressure build to 15 PSI. Once we hit 15 PSI, we're gonna start a 25 minute timer and we're gonna go off and live our life. After 25 minutes, we're gonna shut off the heat and this will complete the sterilization process. We'll let the pressure cooker depressurize naturally and then we'll remove our sweet jar of sugar water, ready to be colonized. Once the jar cools to room temperature, it is ready to inject. Don't do this too soon or the heat is gonna kill your precious mycelium. So I'm using a still air box here, so I'm gonna put the jar inside of that. I'll spray the injection port with 70% isopropyl alcohol. We'll take out our sterile syringe purchased from a trusted online vendor. Then we'll shake the syringe and inject a bit of it into the jar. It won't take much. I do about three milliliters. You could do more, you could do less. As long as you get a little bit of healthy mycelium in there, they're gonna grow and colonize the whole jar. Now I'm going to use my magnetic stirrer once again to mix it all up. Then I'll leave this out at room temperature for a couple of weeks, making sure that it stays out of direct sunlight. I generally like to stir mine every day. However, if you just stir yours every couple of days or even every few days, it'll probably be just fine. The mycelium should get nice Nice and fluffy, almost like a white cotton ball-y looking little thing. Once I notice the mycelium stopped growing, usually after two or three weeks, I've determined that they've pretty much colonized everything they're going to and grown as much as they will, in which case I will move this jar to the fridge where I can store it for up to about three months. Once your liquid culture is fully grown and inoculated, it is ready to be injected into your spawn bag. If you guys wanna learn how to make your own spawn bag, be sure to check that out right here. And if you guys found this video helpful at all, be sure to hit the like button down below as it helps me a lot. And with that, we're finished. Happy growing.